When you're at school, teachers tell you the purpose of your education is to learn and study to achieve results you can apply in the real world. But let me ask you a question. When was the last time someone told you how to study? When was the last time someone told you to learn how to learn? Hey friends, my name's Owen and I'm a first year medical student studying at Monash University. Today we'll be diving into evidence-based study strategies. This video is broken up into two parts. In the first part, I'll be sharing the framework I used in year 12 to achieve a 99.45 ATA. And in the second part, I'll be sharing some of the common pitfalls and study strategy mistakes people commonly use. I'll be backing up all of this information today with scientific research so you can see how different strategies impact the effectiveness of your study. This is a video I wish I had at the beginning of high school, so hopefully you find something useful by the end. Right, so the framework I like to use for my study is the Learn, Memorize, Practice framework. As you can tell, it's broken into three components and I'll be diving into each component along with the evidence that supports it. So the learning phase basically involves you absorbing and understanding your content. Of course, your first point of contact is at school during your classes, so your engagement is crucial. This means actually attending classes, paying attention, asking questions and doing your homework. A 2019 study by the Frontiers in Psychology Journal shows that higher student engagement strongly correlates with increased achievement. Another important aspect of the learning phase is organizing your resources. This means using a to-do list or calendar to organize your deadlines and incorporating a file management system to organize PowerPoints, worksheets, and practice papers. Again, organizational skills are strongly correlated with student competence as shown in a 2011 study by Loyola University in Chicago. So once you've learned this content from class, bringing this information home and consolidating it is incredibly important. I personally use mind maps to solidify my understanding of concepts. The way that mind maps are formed is actually based on a visual representation of neural pathways in the brain and is proven to assist in retention and understanding of concepts. You can read more about mind maps and the evidence behind it in this fantastic book by Tony Buzan. So the next phase of the cycle is memorizing information. Sadly, not everyone has photographic memory, so to be able to apply your knowledge of concepts in assignments and exams, there is some memory component involved. The two strategies to achieve this are active recall and spaced repetition. Active recall is basically the process of recalling information from your memory rather than passively rereading or summarizing. Essentially, it's a process of testing yourself without notes and it significantly increases retention. A 2011 study by Carpig and Blunt demonstrated that it was by far the most effective memory technique out of four strategies, which included a group who read the material once, a group who read the material four times, a group who read the material and then were asked to make a mind map, and then a group who read the material and then recalled the information. After this, space repetition involves spacing out your active recall sessions over specific intervals in time. In psychology, you have this phenomenon called the forgetting curve, which basically explains how you forget things at an exponential rate over time. By interrupting the forgetting curve and spacing your repetition sessions over slightly longer intervals each time, you'll remember content for much longer. In terms of actually applying this to your study, there are lots of ways to do this. One that I personally use is a multi-platform flashcard app called Anki. Flashcard apps like Anki are great because they test active recall, but also have built-in features which allow you to implement space repetition at your desired intervals. Another thing you can also do are closed book mind maps, which again test your recall and are fantastic for trying to remember broader, large-scale concepts. The final phase is practicing. The analogy I like to give is running a race. You wouldn't enter a running race if you hadn't actually practiced racing on a real track, right? The same applies for exams. Practicing as many exams as possible and simulating the conditions is your best chance of doing well in the real exam. This is what I did religiously leading up to my year 12 exams and it worked out really well for me. Evidence again points to this, and as you can see in this graph from a 2013 study by Donlowski, practice exams are by far the most effective strategy for achieving high scores. In this sense, you want to try and get your hands on as many practice exams as possible, both at school and online. And if you can as well, you want to try and get these exams marked by your teachers so you can see how well you're actually progressing. Before we wrap up, let's jump into some of the common but ineffective study strategies that a lot of students still use. Off the top of my head, these are things like rereading, highlighting and summarizing. And if you think about it in relation to the concepts we talked about before, none of these processes actually involve actively recalling information from your memory. The 2013 Dunlowski study also demonstrates that these are overall very low utility study strategies. So what we want to do is start switching from a passive approach to a much more active one where we're testing ourselves and trying to recall information from our brains. 
Of course, ineffective study also relates back to a lot of other factors like poor time management, inconsistency, and the tendency to burn out, which are some juicy topics that we'll save for another time. And there we go, that brings us to the end of this video. If you found any content here useful at all, please let me know by hitting that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. As usual, all the links to the studies and book recommendations will be down in the description below. Also, if you want to see more specific content related to things like time management or mind mapping or anything else, please let me know down in the comments as well. Otherwise, have fun, keep studying, and I'll see you in the very next video. Peace.